What's up guys? Seth with the E-Hunter again. A um, little different video this time. Not outside and uh, not in front of a desk, but what we're going to do tonight, um, I've got some deer steak here from a deer I took last year in Idaho. Um, actually two years ago. Last package. Um, decided what I'd do is I'd do a video on some uh, deer fajitas. Um, I typically make my own, but for the uh, sake of time, just going to use a McCormick fajita mix pack, um, green pepper, red bell pepper, smaller white onion. Uh, I like to put a little bit of garlic in mine, um, and vegetable oil. Um, the difference is I'm going to be using a outdoor edge knife. I guess it's not a difference, but uh, a lot of these guys have used them for hunting applications, everyday carry, but uh, they're such a good knife, I even use them in the kitchen. So we're going to cut it all up and uh, go from there. So let's get started. So this deer steak is, um, I cut it and packaged it myself. It's just in steaks, it's not in, in strips. Um, so I'm going to uh, get it opened up here and and hurry and cut it into some strips. Um, actually, what I'll probably do, so we can get the, the uh, pan hot and the oil going, I'll actually probably cut the vegetables first, um, just to get us started here. Um, I usually do that on my, in the way I've always cooked them, as I get the vegetables going, and then while the vegetables are going, I finish cutting the meat. So we'll get started with it. You guys haven't ever used outdoor edge what, what kind of knives do you use hunting packaging in the field at the kitchen what what do you prefer um, I have used these outdoor edge knives a lot lately in you know uh, getting the animal broke down in the field and then I have a different set that I uh, keep here at the house for cutting and trimming and packaging my meat. I do all my uh, processing here. I don't usually take it anywhere, um, especially if it's a smaller game animal like a deer or an antelope. You know, maybe if it was an elk, there's only so much time one guy can, can uh, handle. So that's understandable maybe if it was a, uh, an elk. But with deer and antelope, I, I typically just uh, do it myself. Um, it seems to work out pretty well. I, I like it. I know what I've got there. You know, I'm not waiting on the, the meat packing place. You, you've heard some horror stories. I'm sure there's many meat packing places that are uh, very legitimate and, and good to deal with. But uh, I've always just liked taking care of it myself if I can. Um, and like I say, I know what. I have got from the field to the package to the plate, um, and that's, that's just something that I, I personally really enjoy. Um, I understand that a lot of guys don't have the time or are unaware of how to do it exactly the right way and, and don't want to damage uh, the meat or, or mess up. And, you know, if I harvest an animal and I'm, I'm going to cut them, uh, if you guys want to see a video, I'm more than happy to kind of go through the basics of what uh, I like to do and, and how I, I process a game animal. Um, we're here to be a resource for you guys, so whatever um, works best for you, um, let me know. I'm, I'm more than willing to do that. Um, I've got the onion cut up. I've got the garlic cut up and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump real quick and um, I'll bring you back once I get the uh, peppers cut up and show you that going in the pan um, and then uh, we'll cut the, the meat up and talk a little bit so I'll see you in a minute see ya all right so I got the veggies all cut up Pretty big pan of veggies, but that's all right. Peppers are good. 
onions taste good, garlic's good. So what I'll do now is uh, I've got enough oil in there to about coat the pan. I've got it hot. Um, like I say, it's been warming up for about five to seven minutes. And now we just ease these on in here. And get them started. And one thing I wanted to ask is uh, what's one of your guys' favorite way to uh, prepare your game meat? Um, tacos, stroganoff, what do, you, what do you guys do? I, I do kind of bounce back and forth. I, I make burgers. I do do some ground stuff for tacos and stuff like that. But fajitas has kind of been a, a staple for me for a long time. Duck, deer, antelope. Uh, just a bunch of uh, different things that I like to do with the, or different meat I like to do with the fajitas. So now I'm going to unwrap these steaks and uh, get them trimmed up into some fajita strips. Like I say, I uh, typically when I trim my own stuff, I do a lot of steaks and then a lot of ground. A couple roasts here and there. I'll do like a venison slow cooker pot roast. That's usually pretty good. Um, but yeah, for a lot of the stuff, I just I just cube it into some some medium smaller steaks or whatever, knowing that I'll probably just come back and cut it uh, down the line into into the sizes I'm gonna be using. Um, but yeah, um, this is one of my favorites. It's pretty good. Um, like I said before, I I usually uh, make my own fajita mix as well. I, get some spices together and, and do that sort of thing but uh, this video would be much longer if I had to sit and uh, measure everything out and then if I just had it you guys would wonder what it was so for for sake of uh, speed I just decided to go with uh, the McCormick stuff which is still pretty good um, but like I say I don't know how well you guys can see it but I'm just trimming it into the real thin steaks or strips whatever you want to call it Like I say, fajitas, I always, I always cook mine uh, vegetables first, and then once they're good and, and starting to uh, brown up or whatever you want to call it, um, then I remove those for a little bit, get the steaks browning or the meat browning, um, and then I come back behind it and mix the two together, let them cook in the the fajita mix for a little while and that that way you can actually add some different seasonings if you want to your steak if you like a little hotter fajita you know uh, you don't have to rely just on the fajita mix itself you can add some different seasonings and whatnot yeah, if you do it that way but all right steaks are cut um i'm gonna let these cook get nice and browned and i'll jump back for me uh, putting the steaks in I might move the camera a little bit so you can see what's going on inside the pan if you'd like. Um, but yeah, we'll see you in a minute. Bye. All right, so I moved the camera around. Um, got these vegetables browned up a little bit. Um, got some oil still hot in the pan. Now we're gonna put the venison or deer steak, depending <laughs> what you want to call it, in the pan. So another really nice thing about these is outdoor edge knives. And if you want to change the blade or you need to clean it or anything. Hit the button, out comes the blade. You can clean inside there, you can clean all over it. Um, pretty quickly with a little salt and water and uh, you're back to a new blade. Or like I say, if it gets dull, they have replacement blades, you just swap one out, you don't really need to sharpen. You can sharpen the blades. They actually sell a blade sharpener I was looking at the other day. Um, but, not necessary. Um, just soap and water it and you're back to using it again. Um, 
like I say, this isn't necessarily a paid thing. I, I enjoy their product immensely, but, but uh, this isn't paid. This is just the, the type of knife that I enjoy using. Um, what, like I say, I asked before, what knives do you guys use? Um, but anyways, we've got the meat in here. I don't necessarily keep the meat in as long as the vegetables. Usually only like three or four minutes um, on the meat. And then I uh, throw the vegetables back in and get the mix going. Um, that way the meat doesn't get too dried out. Granted with oil and you're cooking with a lot of fat there. So it shouldn't be too dried. But... Um, I typically try to only cook for about three minutes or until they start to brown pretty decently. Um, vegetables on the other hand, I'm sure there's websites or whatnot out there that'll tell you exactly how long to cook them for fajitas. I just kind of do it by feel. My vegetables are never uniform when I cut them. So I just kind of cook it by feel. If it looks like they're good and brown or the way I like to eat them, that's what I'll do. Um, but anyways, um, I'll bring you back when we're ready to add the vegetables in the mix in. Um, getting closer. <laughs> Thanks guys. See you in a second. Alright, so we've got the meat ready for the vegetables to be added. Um, when I was cooking the vegetables, I forgot to tell you, I put a little bit of this uh, kin, I don't know, <laughs> I'm a white boy, but uh, I really like this seasoning on the vegetables, kind of gives it a sweet flavor, kind of kicks. Um, so I put a little bit on those, um, and then we're getting to the point where we're ready to add the vegetables, and then we are going to be ready to add the uh, fajita mix in to get to where we've got fajitas. Okay, now we are ready to add the fajita mix. And when you add the fajita mix, you put about a quarter cup of water in, which the thing with itself is fine up there right here, but put the mix in. If you're cooking a lot, you can use two mixes, a little bit of extra water. Um, that kind of depends on how much you've got. Uh, especially with game meat, you're trying to get it to about that pound, but I always seem to go extra on vegetables. My problem is not necessarily the meat. I'm usually close to about a pound of meat. Um, it usually ends up with the, the vegetables being too much, but that's okay. <laughs> I do like those. Um, and I mean, what's, what's fajitas without some onions and, and peppers and whatnot mixed in, so. All right, we've got it good and mixed. Um, now we're gonna let it cook for another three to four minutes. Um, and at that point, the, maji the fajita meat's done and we'll start to getting some tortillas cooked up and some cheese and that sort of thing. So, thanks guys, see ya. They're ready. Um, got it all mixed in, cooked for about three or four more minutes. Um, they're squared away. That's that's your finished product there in the pan. Um, I've got some uh, tortillas here and uh, some different things that uh, people put on them with in my family. Got ranch, tapito, uh, some of slight sriracha on it, kind of an Asian flair type deal. Um, Everybody's got to have a little sour cream, it seems, and then just my Colby, Colby Jack cheese. Um, in the past, I have put uh, lettuce on them or, or different things like that, um, but I'm just going to roll with what we've got currently. Um, you know, I like fajitas. It's a really good way I've found to, to bring wild game to maybe uh, not hunters or, or non-hunters that, that still enjoy game meat. Um, I've served it at parties before. It's it's gone over really well. Duck and like I said in the earlier part, duck and deer and antelope. Um, 
But uh, what's some of the things that uh, you guys cook? I mean, we, I'd love to hear them. You can leave them in the comments down below. Um, I, I think we should create a community around that. You know, this is what I do. This is what, you know, this guy does. Um, and I'd be more than happy to bring them to you. If you want to send some information through me, I'll definitely try it, cook it, film it. Um, but yeah, if, if you liked what happened and, and you like the content, uh, be sure to like and subscribe to the, the channel. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll keep this thing rolling. I know Taryn's got some some uh, more videos planned. He's, he's the YouTube master. I'm just trying to keep up with him. But uh, yeah, let us know and uh, I'm going to go eat. See ya.